Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, <clears throat> bettingangle.us, a free site. It is Thursday, August 10th, 2023. Let's talk about Oscar Valdez against Emmanuel Navarrete. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> Now, it's no secret that I feel that the Canelo, Jamel Charlo fight is mispriced. I think Charlo is a live dog in that one. I think he has a real chance to shock everyone and recognize that if he does, he would be, have been undisputed in two different weight classes. Well, if you, like me, believe that the styles make that fight interesting, this Oscar valdez Emmanuel Navarrete fight is the pre-fight, right down to the excellent left hook. Folks like Canelo, Oscar Valdez has an excellent left hook. <clears throat> it's excellent. Right, It's a punch that, if he lands flush, will materially change the fight. Understand, too, that like Canelo against Charlo, Oscar Valdez actually has more experience in the weight class. They're fighting at 130 here. He has more experience at 130 than does Emmanuel Navarrete, who fought Isaac Dogbe at 122, who had success at 125, just understand, folks, this fight's at 130. Oscar Valdez is more at home at 130 than Navarrete is. <clears throat> just understand that. Let me also point out, too, that like Canelo, Oscar Valdez is an excellent short puncher. He can hit you with a shot that isn't that long, and it can wipe you out. But I believe Valdez has a problem with movement. Look at the Robinson Conceso fight and speed. Look at the Shakur Stevenson fight. I'll be the casino's Huckleberry here. I like Navarrete, the underdog, at a plus 150. I'm also going to hedge the play. And this is that rare fight where both the bet and the hedge are well north of even money. I'm going to say that this fight does not go the distance with a hedge of a plus 170. But I need for you to understand the risk involved. Oscar Valdez is very popular. This fight's in his backyard. If this fight goes the distance and he wins a decision, you lose it all. This is for adults only. This is gambling. Okay, like Jamel Charlo versus Canelo. Navarrete has the superior legs over Valdez. Let me just pivot here and say Canelo actually has better legs than Oscar Valdez. Right, he does. But Canelo doesn't have the legs of Jamel Charlo. Here, Valdez doesn't have the legs of Navarrete. Navarrete, like Jamel Charlo, is episodic. He comes in the pocket, he'll then leave the pocket. He'll regroup and then come back in the pocket. Then he'll leave the pocket. Let's bring in some other names here. You know, it's my belief that the flaws make the diamond. I'm not looking for perfect if perfect exists. I'm looking for fighters who have idiosync 
Fighters who have eccentricities, right? Who, how do I put it? Do things in an unorthodox manner that you really can't duplicate in gyms. You actually have Nabarate here and he has a rare trait. It's rare. Like Philip Ergovic, who I expect to win this weekend, by the way, like Philip Ergovic, like Ray Vargas, if you remember him. I understand Ray's in decline now, but if you remember Ray Vargas in his heyday, Emmanuel Navarrete throws punches with a loop. Right? He's not a short puncher. He's a guy who leans in his shots, and then you notice the punch has a loop on it. If these two fighters throw at the same time, just understand Valdez is going to get there first. But I need for folks to understand Nakatani's another guy who throws punches with a loop. Loopers, if they have the timing right, if they're fighting a full ring fight, right? I'm using the, tame, the term full ring like one in basketball would use full court. If the guy's legs are such where the guy can move and you don't know when the guy's going to enter the pocket, then when he enters the pocket, his punch has a loop. So you can't easily put a hand up to block it because you're not exactly sure where that loop is going to land. And if the guy like Navarrete can put his shoulder in such a place where you don't know whether that loop is going to hit your body or your head. And the guy is proficient to the body. Then I believe loopers have an advantage. I believe it's Ergovic's unorthodoxy that would make him a live opponent against both Usyk and Fury. I believe Navarrete here is going to be throwing punches that are going to puzzle Oscar Valdez. That Oscar Valdez's sparring partners in preparing for this fight could not duplicate. Right? Navarrete is the kind of guy who hits hard, he's hard to predict, and his punches are hard to block. Trainers will tell you, don't try to track the punch. Don't try to affirmatively Move your hand to block the punch. Rather, put your hand on the part of your body where you think the punch is going to land. Right? In the 1970s, heavyweights facing Ken Norton understood that you could not tell because of the loop on Kenny's punches where the punch was going to land. Opponents of Emmanuel Navarrete have the same problem. Now, the million-dollar question, and it's a million-dollar question, is whether Valdez, who is going off at a greater than minus 170 favorite, is going to be able to counter Navarrete with his explosive left hook. Understand how good Valdez is in throwing it. He doesn't have to look for you. There's going to be a height gap in this fight. Right? He's only 5'5 five, five and a half. So what happens, and it's common in boxing, and it's a bit puzzling, is Valdez with a punch for some reason has guys who can't match his power stepping to him because he looks like he's the smaller guy in the fight. So understand, Valdez doesn't even have to go looking for you. Opponents look for him. Terrence Crawford knows this well. Opponents will come looking for him. And Valdez has mastered the art of throwing the left hook to the point where he can throw it as a lead, he can throw it as a counter, his footwork is impeccable. He even knows how to pivot 
drop his left leg backward and throw an explosive counter left hook. So Navarrete is going to have to be a bit of a technician here. But I believe he is. I believe he's very much like Jamel Charlo. Charlo throws straighter punches. Right? Navarrete, when he goes to the body, his punches have a loop. Charlo will throw a hard, stiff, straight jab to an opponent's body. But I believe these guys have mapped out what they're doing. I believe Navarrete knows he can take chances with Valdez's right hand. He can't take chances with Valdez's left hand. Just like I believe, Jamel Charlo knows. If you're going to play games with Canelo and if you're going to be strategic with Canelo, it has to be on Canelo's right side. It cannot be on Canelo's left side. Canelo, like Valdez, has one of the best left hooks in boxing. So I'm expecting Navarrete to win the slow rounds. I'm expecting him to be moving around the ring. He has the much better legs. He's the younger fighter. Understand, Valdez is 32. He's old by 130 pound standards. Now, Barate is going to have a bounce in his step. He's going to have charisma on his side. I thought Robeson can say so really made Valdez look bad. But there's something about Robeson can say so that doesn't grab the imagination of fans. Navarrete is the opposite. Navarrete has some Ray Leonard thing going on where as he bounces around the ring, you're with him. Right? You sense the athleticism. He's going to be moving back. Then he's going to move forward. Valdez is going to be guessing what the two-handed Navarrete will be throwing. Valdez is going to be lying in wait, hoping to land some big left hook. Navarrete is going to have to know whatever he does. He needs to be mindful of that left hook. Have a hand up. Don't walk into it. I believe Navarrete wins the slow rounds. I believe Navarrete can hurt Valdez. He could get a stoppage. But I believe Valdez just has to land a flush left hook once or twice to materially change the fight. Understand, Navarrete, relatively new at 130, hit the canvas in his last fight. Right, Navarrete has had some fights where he has been sluggish and been beaten up, has shown some defects in his chin. He's not as defensively blessed as Jamel Charlo. But I believe his episodic style is going to give the slower-footed, less athletic Valdez more trouble than the bookmakers believe. The bet I like is Navarrete to win the fight. Give me the plus 150. I'll take it. A plus 150 translates into a 40% chance of winning the fight. I believe this fight is evenly matched. I'll take the plus 150. I like Navarrete to win the fight. I'm going to hedge the play with the bet that the fight does not go the distance. Right? I'm not even going to accept the 10.5 over under. I'm going to bet that this fight doesn't go the distance. Give me the full 12. Right? But again, I need for people to understand, if the favorite in his backyard, right? Because this is where Valdez's face can say so, and got, in my opinion, a gift decision. If the favorite wins this fight by decision, you lose it all. Let me hear from you. 
I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Just understand, Valdez, in my opinion, has a problem with movement. Navarrete is going to be moving when he's not jumping in the pocket. And just understand, I believe Valdez has a problem with speed. Now, I'll agree, because of the loop in Navarrete's punches, his shots don't get there as fast as they would if he was a straight puncher. But Navarrete is creative. He throws punches in bunches, right? And for his style, he has surprising hand speed. I like the underdog. I'm also betting this fight doesn't go the distance, right? I'm getting a plus 150. On the underdog, I'm getting a plus 170 that the fight does not go the distance. That's why the bet's possible. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.